First and foremost for coming, uh, Scott Dolch, President and CEO of the Connecticut Restaurant Association. Um, I want to start by, by thanking the Senator. Um, as you guys probably know, it's, it's almost been two years since we've unfortunately started this process and the Senator has been very, very gracious um, in understanding the impact our industry has on the state of Connecticut. And be between him and myself, we've been to well over 50 restaurants um, in the last two years. Um, and we've seen the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows that this pandemic has caused uh, our industry. And today um, we are here to talk a little bit, as you guys know from our release last week, but talk a lot about the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Um, I'll start by saying, you know, the benefits that that was a part of the American Rescue Plan with the ARP, uh, the ARPA funds, which was phenomenal um, on one side because it brought $301 million and helped over 1,300 restaurants, caterers, and private event venues in our state. Um, and when you look at the benefit that that, that, that program had, uh, but then on the flip side, there's 2,066 Connecticut businesses that applied and did not receive anything. So, you know, when, as, as we know, this program, while it was great as it, as it got launched, it's not just a Connecticut issue. This is across the country. A third of our restaurants were supported through this program, and two-thirds were not. This is not a political issue. Uh, no matter what state you were in, a third of the restaurants, in a sense, were funded, and two-thirds were not. And, you know, the competitive imbalance, the challenges that our restaurants were facing, and this was back in the late summer um, when this money came out, and obviously we thought we were going to be through Delta. We thought we were, you know, on on the right side of, of getting through this pandemic, and then obviously Omicron had reared his ugly head, and you saw with the survey results that we we put out with the help of the National Restaurant Association, not only were the survey results um, eye-opening on a national level, even more so on Connecticut, about the, the, the hurt that Omicron, obviously we're in the Northeast, uh, we lost outdoor dining, we had many more challenges, but when you see 51% of restaurants are worried about not making it through this winter without that, how that funding could potentially keep their doors open, um, that, that's really kind of the, the bigger piece, our, our urge to D.C. I know the senator like, just said to me he has to get on a plane today, he's going to be heading back down. Um, you know, this is the, the last hurdle, in my view, of the federal government helping our restaurants, helping our caterers and private event venues. Also, we're here today. I know it's not a working restaurant, um, and I'm going to let Vinny talk in a second. Um, I've known Vinny Carbone for well over 15 years in other capacities of my life. I think everyone in this room knows the impact that Carbone's has had on the state of Connecticut. Um, I said to him, it's like the G. Fox building, even not being a Connecticut uh, born and bred, but being up here 20 years and knowing 85 years that this family has had this location. Um, it's, it was hurtful when I found out even a couple months ago, I assumed because of his location and some of the way the, the SBA that he received RRF and he didn't. Um, and that just shows like this is an area where the, unfortunately this restaurant is not open yet. He's still trying to get this thing back open for the spring. But financially, the burden that this restaurant has gone through is a perfect example. This isn't just new or, or restaurants that haven't been around a long time. 85 years that, the, that Carbones has been in place. Uh, if these walls could talk, as I always say to Vinny, every time I walk in here, um, they would have amazing stories to tell. And we want to get this restaurant, as many as in the other 2,000 businesses, those dollars so they can reopen, they can get through, and they can start recovery. The last thing I'll say is that's our goal right now is our restaurants haven't recovered yet. There hasn't been a recovery period. There's been some highs and lows, but we need to get to the spring, and these dollars on a federal level can have such an impact um, to help so many small businesses in Connecticut. 18,000 jobs, you guys saw that. You know, we saved over 12,000 jobs in the first round of RRF. Real jobs in our state real opportunity. So I'm going to turn it over for a second. I know the senator wants to kind of talk a little more about what's going on in D.C., but I really want Vinny to talk a little bit and, and kind of share his story and what he's gone through with three restaurants, but specifically this location. So, Vinny. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, this um, we've been we've weathered World War II as when the COVID first hit. I asked my dad, what did Grandpa do in World War II? He goes, we never had to close. So these have been unprecedented times for our industry. And, you know, we thank you, Senator, and we hope you could urge your colleagues, not just myself, but for the restaurants in the cities that have been hardest impacted and many other small operators that really need this hand up at this time. You know, we urge 
Washington to refund this uh, program that could be kind of instrumental as a hand up. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to be here for as long as we can. Uh, but, you know, this is essential right now for us to get back on our feet, as well as many of our other constituents. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Thanks, Vinny. Uh, thank you, Vinny. Uh, really proud to be in Carbones, as I always am. And I want to join in thanking Vinny and his family for their immense service to the state of Connecticut. I think there are a lot of people who are just as happy that these walls can't talk. Uh, a lot of history here, as you know. Um, and Scott is right. Uh, I've been all around the state of Connecticut in countless restaurants listening and hearing the stories of their struggling. And they are still struggling. The costs of running a restaurant are higher than in recent times. The cost of food alone is 40 percent higher. Inflation is hitting restaurants, but so are the restrictions on people coming together and the feelings of insecurity. The economic progress that we've made has been impressive, but uneven. And restaurants continue to struggle, not just to survive, but to thrive. And that's important for all of us, not just to quality of life and culture. Restaurants give us the enriching, literally enriching nutrition that we need as a society as well as uh, human beings. But they're also an economic driver. There are literally 18,000 jobs at stake in our restaurant industry making continued progress. Much as a clock has a mainspring, our economy has restaurants as a driving economic force, a measure of how well we will do in the future. And that's why I've championed the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, $28.6 billion for the nation as a whole, contained originally in the American Rescue Plan. If you remember nothing else about the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, it's bipartisan. Bipartisan efforts to aid restaurants all around the country, red states, blue states, strong, overwhelming support for it. And right now, I am going back to Washington to continue to fight to bring back more aid for our restaurant industry. $301 million for 1,300 restaurants, a good start, not enough. We need more. And fortunately, we have right now a measure that will aid restaurants and all small businesses, a small business package, as we call it, that will aid, for example, gyms and minor league teams, small businesses that are continuing to struggle because our economic progress has been uneven. Small businesses are our economic lifeblood. I don't need to tell anybody in Connecticut about the importance of small businesses. And this small business package of as much as $60 billion has bipartisan support. My colleagues, Senator Cardin of Maryland, Democrat, Senator Wicker of Mississippi, a Republican. I am helping to lead it. And I am proud that we have bipartisan support. So we're going to continue this fight, make no mistake, $301 million for 1,300 restaurants covers probably no more than half of what we need. And I will work with restaurant owners here in Connecticut like Vinnie Carbone and the Restaurant Association, continue to listen to them and make sure that we bring home the kind of aid for small businesses, especially restaurants. Now, restaurants are only some of the beneficiaries of the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. It's really all food businesses that deal with the public, bars, <coughs> bakeries, breweries, wineries, food trucks. We're talking about food businesses, including the kind of folks who deal with the public on retail basis, 
uh, all across the state of Connecticut because food in Connecticut is such an important part of our economy. And I'm hoping that this restaurant revitalization fund will enable Carbones to reopen and continue to do the great service that it does. And I look forward to coming back here, Benny, when you reopen. And, Thank you. And uh, we will celebrate. Thank you. Anything else, John? No. Any questions? Um, just, Vinny, just for you, um, sure. you know, as, we, as we stand here today, it's kind of like a time warp coming out here. It seems like some of these table settings haven't been touched. Can you send stuff to the microphone? Yeah, no, sure. Years. Can you just talk about, you know, first of all, what went into that decision to close, and then how important is it to get this restaurant back up and running again? Well, we closed the um, day before St. Patrick's Day, anticipating the closure when COVID first hit. So it is, it's kind of, I walk in here, it's like the twilight zone. Um, you know, we kind of were making plans before the Delta variant of trying to open up with, uh, you know, on a limited basis, even though staffing was really tremendously tough for a lot of people in the industry at that time. Uh, then when the, the, you know, the Delta variant hit, corporate got pushed off, we decided just to pump the brakes because, you know, you can't act with your heart, you have to act with, you know, make business decisions, and that's all we're trying to do. Uh, the PPP was imperative. But this restaurant revitalization fund is critical. Uh, we can't, you know, urge Washington enough and thank the senator to try to push this. Um, like I said, for myself and for, you know, for many of uh, our, my colleagues and fellow restaurateurs. So, and just, that, you know, for people who don't know, I mean, the history of this restaurant, what's gone on here over the years, and, and how personal it is to you and your family. I mean, what does this building mean to you? Well, I was a paper boy on Franklin Avenue here as a kid. So, uh, you know, I remember, uh, you know, the early humble days to uh, days when, uh, you know, quite honestly, Republicans and Democrats would be filled in here for lunch and they'd be shaking hands across the aisle to get things done. So I'm very happy to hear that this is a bipartisan bill. And, and again, uh, you, know, it, you know, it means a lot to my heart. But again, we're making decisions with our head. And uh, I think it's just critical at this time for our industry like you said, the senator said, and Scott, there's so many jobs at stake. We support uh, people working here that, you know, take a bus over here or walk to work. So I think it's just critical for the workforce, for, you know, and for the, you know, just the general way of life uh, in Connecticut. Restaurants are a great place. As we all know, we need socialization and, you know, breaking bread. That's one of the, you know, greatest things you could do. So uh, we really are uh, optimistic. And I might just add on a personal note, um, you know, talk about breaking bread here. Um, going back to my days in the state legislature, I remember with huge fondness and excitement coming here, breaking bread, you know, one of the great traditions that brings us together is breaking bread. It brings us together across party lines, as I found many lunches here did when I was in the state legislature, when I was attorney general. I maybe have spent less time here as U.S. Senator, but uh, same tradition holds. And I, I want to emphasize, first of all, uh, you still have restaurants that are open yes. elsewhere yes. in the city. I don't want to do the... Yeah, Rocky an, Hill. We have Rocky ad. Hill open, and we right. have a restaurant open in Bloomfield. Right. So Carbone's is still yeah. open for business. Yes. Uh, but, um, you know, the other thing that used to strike me all the time was when I came here, uh, there are waiters who spent their whole lives working here, serving people who, and, and chefs who really were part of a family. Carbone's you know, was a family. And so I know you and I have talked about how heartbreaking it was to, to right. in effect, lay them off. Right. And, um, you know, Vinnie mentioned the PPP program. Uh, just to clarify, the PPP program, Paycheck Protection Program, money went to Carbones yes. and helped to enable him to keep his other restaurants open, $14 billion. $14 billion from the Paycheck Protection Program and related efforts to small businesses like this one and others to keep their doors open, more than 100 and more than 100,000 businesses in Connecticut benefited from it. But the Restaurant Revitalization Fund targeted restaurants and food businesses. Yes. And that's why it is so important 
uh, at this point. A lot of federal aid has come to Connecticut, literally tens of billions of dollars. But the restaurants and food businesses of Connecticut need this help now because they are continuing to struggle. 100%. Yeah. Senator, speaking of uh, breaking bread and, and working across the aisle, uh, one of your uh, your, your new Republican challengers announced, um, and part of her announcement was saying that you know that you're you're lockstep with uh, President Biden and the and the Democrats. Do you have anything to? Is that a question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my focus is on doing my job, working for the people of Connecticut. There'll be plenty of time for politics later in the year. Vinny, I remember. I remember trying to find Hartford Mayor Mike Peters all the time. And I would always find him at the bar here, and uh, a lot of deals were made. But I, I'd like Senator Blumenthal to comment on some of the things that Sam Claritus has said, that uh, we're spending way too much money and creating incentives for people not to work and stay home during this pandemic. And uh, that's her criticism, that we're just spending too much money on that. And that's why we're not seeing people coming back to work, and we're having such a problem finding employees. You know, uh, let me just say again, uh, my focus really is on doing my job and working for the people of Connecticut. There'll be plenty of time for politics later in the year. I'm here right now because we need more aid for our restaurants, and I'm going to fight for it, just as I have to bring back to Connecticut the $301 million that have aided 1,300 restaurants so far, but we need more. That's my job, and I'm going to continue working for the people of Connecticut. Are you worried about too much spending and debt that's, at some point? You know, that's all I'm going to say about it. I, I think these restaurants need help, and we need to make sure that our restaurants and our small businesses receive the help they need when they are struggling because they are job creators, economic drivers. I'm going to fight for that assistance. We've been successful in bringing to Connecticut tens of billions of dollars for our small businesses, but we need to continue that work. A question for Scott Fields, if sure. I may. Yep. Um, is there anything that you think the state can do in terms to ensure that the restaurants that didn't get any funding last time get that funding this time? Well, I think it's two different issues. Obviously, on a state side, there's, there's the different funding mechanisms. Most of the PPP or ERTC or all these different programs that have been out there have been federal dollars to you know, to the question I was just asked. And I think, um, yeah, we're always worried about, you know, inflation has, has reared its ugly head, and we know how that not only affects everyone at the gas pump or a grocery store, these restaurateurs are feeling it just as much and trying to what they're paying cost of food and then what they can in turn provide to the customers. But I think the two parts of this is, you know, when you look at this program and replenishing it, you're helping, you know, the PPP program, the Paycheck Protection Program, was really about paycheck protection, paying your employees. It wasn't offsetting the debt that these restaurants were carrying for 22 months. And that's really where the revitalization, when you talk about rent, you know, uh, like paying all the other bills in the back of house, all the other supplies that got lost and had to get thrown out because they were shut it, shut their doors. So many other challenges that these restaurants have faced. And I think it is a bipartisan, which is what I love to hear. You know, being from Maryland and talking with Senator Cardin and, and, and Senator Wicker, them sitting together and saying, hey, this, this, isn't, a, this isn't a political issue at all. And we have to go back to our states. I talked to all my peers across the country, and we're all feeling it. We're all getting those calls. Those 2,066 businesses, which is how many Connecticut restaurants or caterers, as I have a caterer behind me in the back from C.D. Wedding Group on my board, um, or private event venues that applied. And to apply, so everyone knows, you had to be well over 30% in losses, more like 40, some as high as 90%, not to put point my finger to someone in the back of the room, to even be eligible. So as a whole, it was 3,300 Connecticut businesses applied out of 8,500 8, restaurants. So it was really the hardest hit. That's what we're asking to fund. And to, to answer that state question, I think there's other things the state can do. Um, on, you know, they don't have the, the, the opportunity to probably print more dollars, but the dollars they have here, the ARPA funds that the, the mayors and, and first selectmen have is something I'm very intrigued by. How are they helping hospitality businesses? What are they doing? And then on the state side, we're going into session in a week from Wednesday. Um, you know, we, there's been some, some great opportunities, outdoor dining, alcohol to go, you know, tax remittance programs. There's things that can be done. That is also my other hat of my job 
that we need help federally, and this is what this conversation is today. D.C. needs to listen loud and clear and help these businesses recover and get back on their feet. And the, the days that Vinny's going through every day about just breaking even, he's not offsetting that 23 months of debt. That's what that revitalization is. It allows them to get back where they're, they're – so I've had calls from restaurateurs telling me they had to take out a loan, a $200,000 loan. They owe $5,000 for the next 30 years, and they're 60 years old. And they're like, it was the only way I could stay open. But what, that wasn't my fault, but I had to do that. And, and how do I – can I get that loan into a grant? Is there a way to help that? But those are, the, those are the real calls I deal with every day, and that's where this program can have such an impact – not in, across the country, but in Connecticut, and, and we are the lifeblood. We're a $9 billion industry. We're 8,500 restaurants. We're 160,000 jobs. You know, we want to get it back on our feet, and we want to be better than we were. And I, I think, you know, there's a lot of, of that we're trying to unpack with all of this with our industry, but my hope is getting this across the finish line quickly because Omicron is still, we're not through it. We're still, you know, we, obviously every day we look at the numbers and hope that we can have a great Valentine's Day. We can have an, you know, not to into what's going to happen on February 2nd with, with the groundhog. I'm hoping for an early spring because we need it um, of how bad this winter has been. But I, I think everyone in this room understands the impact and the, and the challenges this, this industry has faced. And I hope that the people in D.C., as the senator knows, can get together, get in a room, and find a, a pathway, which is about 40, I think it's $40 billion is what SBA has come back. We know what that number is, too. Everyone's applied. Everyone, you know, is still waiting. It's not like we're just putting a number out there and hoping it's going to fund it. We actually know how we can successfully implement it, and the SBA can quickly turn that money around um, with Catherine Marks and others. So, is hope it that a challenge also trying to get workers back, right? Because this is the industry that a lot of these employees said, you know what, that's not the career for me. I'm going to do something else. And so even the restaurants that have reopened, they can't find people. And so, or they're, you know, commanding more money than restaurants can afford to pay them because they know they're in demand. So how do you change that dynamic? You can get these places to be open. How do you find people? Uh, listen, Susan, I, I, you're, you're, you're asking some great questions in the sense that our industry is phenomenal. And I think that a lot of people took it for granted before the pandemic hit. Um, whether you're an employee, whether you're a customer, whether, you know, whether you're a legislator, I think people didn't realize the jobs, the impact and one in three Americans at one point in their life have worked in the restaurant industry. A lot of people will look at me and go, oh, it's transient. People like to get in, get out. I don't know anybody else. Whatever job you had, working inside of a restaurant teaches you so much. Customer service, adversity, working on a team, uh, you know, being punctual, all the things that, you know, and you, and you can make a career. We've seen managers being potentially paid now at, at all different restaurants in the six-figure range. You can be, you can get an owner-operator. There's opportunities to move up. There's no other industry that I know of that you don't need an education. You can be incarcerated and come out. Like we allow, we, we, we take anybody to have that opportunity. And I, I kind of look at this now as saying, yes, some, some of our top people had left the industry because of the challenges that unrelated to us that 23 months had faced. And they had to try to figure out, okay, where's the stability in this? So now we've got to go find a new workforce. And that's partly my job as well when you look at our foundation and our growth and try to entice people to say it is a great opportunity to come work in this industry. No matter what your age is or what your experience level, you should you know, want to come and, and, and socialize and, and get back out. I think someone asked that question about work from home and paying from home. Can't do that in our industry. That's what's also made it so challenging for us. And, and you know, hopefully as we get through this you know, endemic, if it does happen sooner rather than later, that's what's also made it very challenging to get people back as well is because it's just that, oh, well, I have to work every day. I've got to come out. I have to be there. Yeah, you do. That's, otherwise, we can't function um, as an industry. So um, I think all of that will, will suffice and, and we'll get a better place. But all these things that we're talking about today play such a role. And we can do a great job in Connecticut of being business friendly and small business friendly, but it starts with our industry. And we've got to get it back on its feet and got to get it back to, towards recovery. Uh, Senator Wicker, for example, of Mississippi, is the leading co-sponsor. There's a group. I can get you more of the names. But there's strong bipartisan support. And I'm proud to be helping to lead the effort. I'm proud to be standing with the restaurant owners and food businesses of Connecticut, not only in the $300 million that we've gotten already, but hopefully the substantial more funding that will create jobs and drive economic progress. And to the 
critics of this kind of program, come talk to the restaurant owners and food businesses that I've listened to around the state of Connecticut like. What are the chances that this is this is gonna pass? Uh, I think well, let me just say, I say about the Congress in general, I'm hopeful that we're gonna make progress on the appropriations bill that's now before Congress, and I'm very hopeful that it will include restaurant revitalization. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, sir.